Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the MMA Corner Post Fight Recap. As tonight, we're going to break down and recap all the action that was UFC on Fox 17, Cerrone versus Dos Anjos 2. I'm your host, Josh Davis, alongside my co-host for the evening. I don't even know what to call him, Justin Fuller. Justin, welcome to the show. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. I'm feeling good. This is a good night of fights. It was. It's an excellent night of fights, and, and you know we're glad to have you back. Uh, it's about time we get back to doing these shows. It's what we need to be doing after every event. But anyways, let's get to the action. Uh, where do you want to start? You want to start with uh, Miles Jerry getting his butt whooped by Charles Oliveira? You want to go straight into the main card? What are your thoughts? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll comment on the prelims real quick, and then uh... – and then the card as a whole, and then we'll just work our way up the main card. How's that work? That'll work just fine. All right, yeah. So as far as the prelims go, um, you know, I think Usman really stood out, proved he does belong in the UFC with that win over Leon Edwards. It was just very technical. He controlled the fight the whole time. He didn't really gas. So I think that was a really good step up in competition for him. And then uh, – Oliveira just doing work. I mean, that was amazing. Um, and then Nate Marquardt, the old line, still has some pep in his step. You know, we saw a never was take on a has been, and Marquardt put himself back on the map with one punch. You know, I have to agree that Nate put himself back on the map with that one punch. You know, the first round wasn't his round. He didn't look good. He looked sluggish he looked tentative you know he honestly looked like a guy that didn't have much left and then he went sat down listened to coach trevor Whit whitman pep him up and that's what trevor does first thing trevor always does is tell you something that you did well and that's exactly what he did with nate then went into coaching and then again ended with something that nate did well he always he's a very positive influence and you know when cb came rushing in with his hands down and his chin out, and they capitalized. It was pretty simple. Uh, but great victory for, for Nate Marquardt. It's good to see him back training with the guys at Grudge, working with Trevor Whitman. Uh, solid victory for him. And I don't know where C.B. Dalloway goes from here. Uh, he's a guy that should have been and never was. And so uh, I don't know. I, to be real honest, I wouldn't be shocked to see that the UFC let him go after this. Uh, it's a it's a fight against someone that he should have beat. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. And going back to, to Usman, you know, uh, the Black Zillions speak very highly of him. So uh, he trains hard. He, he's a workhorse. He's, you know, he's got a lot, of, a lot of talent. So we'll see how his career progresses from here. But let's get into the main card. Let's, uh, let's start off with, with – uh, the opening event. What were your thoughts? Did you agree with the decision? Uh, yes, I did actually. Um, I had uh, Carolina Kowikowitz. Uh, I'm just going to call her KK for short. I think it's a good nickname. So KK, See, I had I had her favorite. See, I tweeted her this. out as Cow K O W. I'm sure she. <laughs> up, but that's that's how I K Cow. You know that could work. Uh, Anyway, Instead I, of pa pow, we got kick <laughs> Yeah. Hey, cake cow, come hang out with pa pow. All right. So I did. I had her favorite going in. Um, I thought it was definitely a close fight, but, you know, she was just winning in the exchanges. Um, I think she should have kept it there instead of trying to play the same game um, as Randa Marcos likes to do. But, I mean, you could just tell. Randa was just starting to telegraph her shots and just getting lit up there in the second half of the fight. I mean, that second round was Randa's hands down. That third round was KK's hands down. That first round, I gave the slight edge to KK. See, and that's where we differ, because I gave the slight edge to uh, Marcos. I actually had her winning the decision 29-28. I don't think there's any uh, discrepancies that uh, KK won the, the third round, clearly. Uh, Marcos won the second round, clearly. And so, like you said, the first round, and I think it was debatable. I don't think that... Uh, Marcos got robbed or anything like that. It was an excellent fight. Uh, if she wanted it, she should have gone out and took it in the third round, and she did. Uh, so kudos to KK. It was a solid performance. Uh, I want to see both of these girls back. I thought, I thought it was 
I thought it was a good yeah. fight. I was, I was, I was equally impressed with both of their performances. The one judge, though, that gave uh, KK the thirty to twenty-seven victory. No, I do, of course. I, yeah. I do have to call you out. What the hell were you watching? Uh, did you go get a drink? Go to the bathroom? Do something <laughs> in that second round? Just completely yeah. miss it? Because. Uh, the girl got dominated in the second round. She did absolutely nothing that you could even remotely say. Had her back for like three minutes, too. Yeah, there's, there's no way. You're on crack, okay? And you should have your license revoked. That's all I'm saying. But, again, you know, I'm not saying Rhonda got, got robbed. I gave her the decision, but it's whatever. It was a hell of a fight. We'll move on. All right, so up next we have the return of Nate Diaz. Uh, yes. We love Nate Diaz. God, this was... You know, going into this fight, I'd actually predicted Nate to lose. If you look at the staff picks, I, I picked Michael Johnson to win. Uh, I just thought being off for as long as, as Nate was, I mean, that's a long layoff. And who knows what he was doing. But, oh, my God, he looked awesome tonight. He came back tonight. He put on a an ass whooping on Michael Johnson. And the one thing I want to throw out, I love Michael Johnson. Uh, I think he's a hell of a fighter. I think he's a great guy, but the look on his face, trying to act surprised about the decision. Come on, dude, you had to know you lost the second, third round. You were clearly dominated uh, in, in two thirds of the fight. So you couldn't have been that surprised. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think uh, a lot of people wrote Nate off coming into this, coming off the couch, right? And especially with the way Michael Johnson's looked. I know he had that loss to Dariush, but a lot of people thought he won that fight, myself, myself included. included. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, all of us. Um, but I, I, I called it beforehand. I said, no, here's what's going to happen. Johnson kind of loads up on everything, and that works really well when guys want to engage you. But one thing Darius did expose, whether you thought he won or not, was hanging back and then timing your shots and your counters and engaging and anticipating the engagement really throws off his timing. And uh, I knew Nate was really good at that. I knew he was going to pick his shots real well. That first round, I feel like he just sort of gave to Johnson, like, I'm feeling you out right now. And then because he came out towards the end of that first round, you saw his timing down, and then for the next two rounds, he was just picking him off. I mean, he was slapping him in the face so much to the point that the ref was like, hey, quit slapping him in the face. Your fingers are going to get in the way. Like, that's, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. just how much he had this fight down. And Johnson, he got tired because his breathing got thrown off because that timing got thrown off, and you can't be loading up on everything like that on guys. They're going to hang back and pick their shots on you. So let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, Nate whooped his ass, and it's a great victory for Nate. And, you know, I'm not going to say that that's the best we've ever seen Nate Diaz look. You know, no. I'm not, I'm not going to rogue in it. It was a hell of a performance. But we've seen Nate look good in the past. Obviously, his post-fight rant, we'll call it, calling out Connor. That's a fight I personally would love to see. I guarantee the UFC is not going to make it. But what are your thoughts on it? I mean, does it make sense? Is it a fight that you'd want to see? Is it a fight you think fans would want to see? Give me your thoughts. Um, I, know, I know our writer, Scott Zier, uh, called it out. A while. Uh, we, we posted it, what, on Friday, yeah. I think. So uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I think it's one of those fights. It's a fun fight. I'd like to see it. If it did ever happen, it won't be you anytime soon. a chance? What's that? You give Nate a chance? Oh, most definitely. Oh, of course. If the fight did happen, hypothetically, I think it would be very competitive. I do. Nate's tall. Okay, uh, you know, that's the one thing. Connors used to be in the taller guy. You know, Nate's lanky. Nate, like, Nate likes to hang on the outside. Nate doesn't like to bull rush people. So I definitely think it would be a competitive fight for sure. And, I mean, Nate's jiu-jitsu is going to be like something, you know, uh, probably on a level that Connor really hasn't had to engage very much because he really doesn't do a lot of groundwork against jiu-jitsu guys. So I definitely think it would be a competitive fight. I just think the chances would happen you're like uh, 1 in 50 right now. Hey, Josh, did I lose you, buddy? All right. Uh, not sure what happened to Josh, uh, but moving on up the card. 
Overeem versus Junior Dos Santos. Uh, this was a really tough one to call beforehand. Um, I was favoring Overeem slightly going into it. Uh, but really, up until he hit that left, I mean, it was still anyone's fight. JDS was landing fewer shots, but I felt like they were better shots. Um, but Overeem was just looking for a home for that left all night long. You could just tell every time. He would switch it up. All right, looks like. All right, you back, buddy? Hey, I can't hear you right now. All I right, apologize. there you are. Okay, I so, am back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You froze up. I noticed you froze up after I finished breaking down Diaz Johnson. I just moved on to Overeem. Uh, said, you know, I had I had Overeem winning this, but by a very slight margin. And I felt like up until he landed that left, it was still anyone's fight. Overeem was landing more shots, but JDS was landing some big shots. But you saw Overeem looking for a home for that left all night long. You know, to be real honest, I'm, I didn't think either one of them was doing much in the fight. I, I thought the one punch that was thrown in the first round broke, uh, broke JDS's nose. And in the second round out, Alistair started to find his range. I think he realized that JDS isn't a fighter anymore, that uh, he wasn't throwing punches. He wasn't engaging. Uh, he was moving forward. He was doing everything he needed to do except pull the trigger. And I think once uh, Alistair realized that inside his head, that's when he knew he had to fight and uh, just waited, found a shot, and put JDS to sleep. And here's the thing. I'm all for giving fighters every opportunity to survive, to fight back, to do everything uh, that they need to do. However, I'm also against fighters taking needless damage. Uh, JDS was out. He wasn't, even if he got to his feet, he wasn't going to do anything to stop the 20 more punches that were going to come. Uh, I thought it was a, a good stoppage. Yeah, that's one of those where, like, I thought it was a little early, but I don't think the outcome would have been different, you know? And, and you, it's like you always have to look – to Frankie Edgar Gray Maynard for that. Like if there's ever was one example where we could have stopped it and no one would have complained, but the outcome changed. I just think this is definitely one where he probably just wouldn't have taken 20 more shots and the fight would have ended the same. You know, I don't disagree about the Frankie Edgar thing. What I will say is there's only one Frankie Edgar and that's Frankie. <laughs> and so we can't, we can't think that everyone else can do that because really only Frankie can do that. And during that fight, during that fight, I actually, you know, was okay if they would have stopped it. I was like, this, this easily could be stopped. I'm just fine with that. So the fact that, you know, Frankie is just Frankie. He's, he's crazy. So uh, <laughs> kudos, kudos to Frankie, but JDS, he was done. Uh, he rolled over. He was trying to stand up. He wasn't defending himself. As soon as he did stand up, he would have turned around with his hands down and eaten 20 more punches, like I said. There's there's no point in doing that to him. So let me ask you this real quickly. What do you think's next for Alistair? And then on the back end of that, what do you think's next for JDS? Where does he go from here? Uh, you know, I was just thinking about that earlier uh, before we went on the air, and I was trying to think, like, well, there's a lot of matchups coming down the pipe here. We've got uh, Stipe Miocic versus uh, Andre Olavsky, and then we've got Ben Rothwell versus Josh Barnett. So uh, it's kind of about who's out there. Like uh, Travis Brown's out there. That would be a good fight for JDS. We need to determine one of these guys is going to stick around, one of them is not. You know, some, someone's got a future and someone doesn't. That would be a good fight for them. Uh, but for Overeem, I mean, I think he can kind of – this is a big win. That was his last fight on his contract. So he, he might take a little time off and see where the landscape changes here. Uh, uh, I also would anticipate maybe that Mark Hunt fight, Overeem. That would be one I'd pay for. You know, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, I know that Mark Hunt will lobby for JDS. Uh, that's a fight that I know he wants again, and, and JDS would probably take it. Um, Mark Hunt's be... a lot better now, and JDS's chin's a lot softer than last time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's going to be interesting. I know Alistair thinks he deserves a title shot, but I still believe that if uh, if Stipe Miocic goes out and KOs Orlovsky, or if Orlovsky KOs 
Mielczyk, uh, that winner will get a title shot. However, if they go out and pussyfoot it and, you know, jerk off like Mayer and Orlovsky did, that ain't going to get it done. That's not going to get you a title shot. But if they win in definitive fashion, the winner of that fight absolutely will be the next title shot. So I think Reem's got one more fight to go, but I'm not Joe Silva. So, yeah. you know, you know yeah. you're right. An injury or a lackluster fight, I think he's automatically top five come Monday morning. And he has a win over Verdum. So if Verdum wins, that's kind of an easy matchup to make. You know, I have to agree. And, and to be real honest, I think if JDS would have uh, knocked out over him and Verdum beat Cain Velasquez, we probably would have been seeing the rematch of JDS versus Verdum. Uh, but, again... It's funny how fights play out. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the main event. You know, oh my God, the last fight oh, man. of 2015 for the UFC, Rafael Dos Anjos defending his title against Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Before I go off, what are your thoughts? You know, I mean, I, I said to you before we went on the air, I was like, I'm an RDA believer. And I don't, don't think for – I didn't doubt him before, but – Tonight, I mean, I'm 100% in his corner. That is his division because this was a really tough one for me to pick. I, I gave Donald slightly the advantage just because, you know, I think we were going to see the best version of him tonight, and I didn't know if we were going to see the best version of RDA or not. I do think his last performance was the best version, but I, I didn't know if he could recreate that. And it just, I mean, like you said before we went on the air, when you don't even get to throw one punch in a title fight, you know, that's that's heartbreaking to watch, especially for fans of Cowboy. Um, but it was definitely a dominant performance, and this this one shook the rate, shook the whole landscape of the division. You know, yeah, it did. It it completely shook everything in that division, and RDA did put the stamp on it. This is his division. Uh, there's going to be all the steroids talk and everything else that that goes with RDA. Uh, and all the Brazilians coming off this win. However, dude looked phenomenal. He went out there and just put an ass whooping on Donald Cerrone. Donald didn't even get a throw punch. He didn't get to do anything. And on my radio show here in Denver on Mile High Sports, Friday night I said, if Donald is going to win this fight, he's got to throw the first punch and the last punch. And he didn't either. And the reason why I said that is because he had to get off first. He couldn't sit back and eat a couple of RDA's punches. The guy hits too hard. You know, he he needed to get off first. He needed to get in the zone immediately. Uh, and it, it just wasn't his night. And unfortunately, this is the third title opportunity that, that Donald Cerrone has lost. One in the UFC, two in, in the WEC. I don't know that he's going to get another opportunity. It's pretty disappointing. And the look on his face afterwards, that said it all. I mean, he was definitely wrecked. He was disappointed. He knew that he didn't come out and perform. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, kudos to RDA. And again, RDA telling Conor McGregor that this is, is his division. Uh, that is a fight that I'd like to see as well. Uh, RDA versus versus Connor in that fight, you know, Connor is going to be just as tall. He's going to be just as lengthy. So on and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, it's a hell of a matchup. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the real winner here tonight was Frankie Edgar because Connor knows RDA ain't selling pay-per-views, but RDA cow or but McGregor cowboy could sell a lot more pay-per-views. So because RDA wins, McGregor stays at featherweight for the time being and Frankie gets his title shot. Wow. Here's the thing. Um, there's there's possibilities to both because if you do the the event in one of the big places in Brazil, it's going to sell out. You're going to have have tons of money there. Uh, you could also take that fight to Ireland and sell it out. You could take Frankie to Ireland and sell it out, or you could do it in one of the major stadiums here. Uh, there's a lot of of opportunity but i agree with you i think the fact that rda won this fight and there's no more uh cowboy cerrone on the table uh, then yeah i i think that that we're gonna see uh frankie versus uh connor and i i think that's a, that's a fight i want to see however however 
there's a lot that we have to to take into consideration you know connor has made it very clear that he's going home to hang out with his girlfriend and his family and, and do the christmas stuff it'll be interesting to see how big connor gets in his little time off uh he does struggle to make 145 pounds let's say he gets up to 190 195 I mean, is he coming back down to 145? I don't know. It, it, it'll be interesting to see. There's, there's still a lot. There's still a lot of unknowns. But the Frankie Edgar, Conor McGregor fight—that's the fight that I want to see most. And the second fight that I want to see, to be real honest, is Conor and Little Diaz. You know, I would love to see that. I would love to see it. I would. I would. Come on. The amount of trash talking. I mean, seriously, think about the media tour for that. Just be uh, realistic. Think about the media tour for that. All the trash talking that would, would go on. They could hype the hell out of that. <laughs> okay, he says they already lost. They The way they got punked, they already lost. I ain't lost shit. I'm right here, motherfucker. That was like... I was like, this is the greatest piece of television I'm seeing right now. This is better than when his brother did this against Anderson Silva. This is beautiful. No, it, it was it was great. It was great. It was awesome. So I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what Connor and again, it's what Connor decides to do, which is uh, freaking I, terrible. I, I as far think we're as gonna get like Tony Ferguson, little Diaz next, or something like that. Something exciting. Something exciting. Are you telling me Connor Lil Diaz isn't exciting? I'm saying that that's, I'm saying that's got a one in fifty chance. I'm saying yeah, no, a more a more realistic fight absolutely would be uh Ferguson versus versus Diaz. Well but is that a fight that Diaz will take? It's you know uh, maybe. Yeah. He's ranked number five. Diaz wants to be fighting for a title. He wants another shot at RDA. He's ranked you know, number yeah. five, so we'll see how or, it goes. or Alvarez, we'll see how he plays out in this Pettis fight. Or it could be Pettis. Who knows? So give us your final thoughts on the car. Ooh, you know, this, I mean, as far as free, this was a pretty stacked car, I felt like. Like, I felt like in some ways this was just as stacked as the next, if not more, than the next pay-per-view. Oh, it's you know? more stacked. Like, it, you know, it, at least as much, if not more, than the uh, the Lawler Condit. Now, I love the Lawler Condit fight. They just don't have a very good supporting cast. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. This fight, though, this was a really good fight to end the year, though. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, I, I think it was just, it said it all. 66-second knockout, King, new king of the division. I mean, he beat the two guys who beat everyone else. I don't even know who he fights next. Khabib, if he's ever healthy. If not, I have no idea. He's going to be rematching guys for a while because that's how stacked this division is. Yeah, I have to agree. He's... You know, he's the man right now. And this was an awesome event to to cap off 2015 for the UFC. Free on Fox. They did an excellent job with it. Everybody performed. All the fans got in everything they wanted. They got knockouts, exciting fights, everything that you could ask for. And, yeah, this to me, this, this card was uh, more top-heavy than – then UFC 196 is going to be. We have the the great main event, and other than that, it's it's you know a pretty lackluster card. But uh, with that being said, UFC they continue to to deliver, and they delivered tonight. Everyone performed. It was a great return for Nate Diaz. Hopefully, he uh, carries this into 2016 instead of taking 2016 True. off. So right. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. We do have some some big big things planned uh, upcoming. We got some things in the work with Wonder Boy. Uh, definitely tune into the radio show uh, Monday night. I'm sorry, Monday through Friday, eight to ten p.m. Mountain Time. We break news on that all the time. So uh, for all your MMA needs, stay tuned to the MMA Corner. You're home for all things MMA. We're out. Pow.